I love that. I love that picture of him. He was living in the woods in a tent at that time, and with a group of homeless people. And I was so upset. He says, "You see, I'm not homeless. I can I can have a house if I want to have a house." It's, he was a mountain man, and he would go up into what he called the scrub. And he, the picture that you took that from, um, if you looked at it, he was in that shirt and these tall moccasins. Yeah. And he'd had those moccasins for 30 years, and they'd fallen apart, and he'd sewed them to his feet. And he'd go up in those in the mountains in California and just a loincloth off in those moccasins, and he'd be gone for weeks. And, um, but I struggled with it because in my mind, he was gone. Yeah. So. My dad... When he had been away for a while, he came back and his, his ex-wife was pregnant and he did not think that Mark was his. Yeah. Um, my, when my dad and his mom divorced, my dad just, he left. And then a couple years later, he and my mom met and married, had my sister and I, but we... We never met when, um, you know, back in the 60s, 70s, moms got custody. Mm -hmm. And my dad's um, idea was he didn't want them going back and forth and back and forth between two dads. And um, so they just kind of, he paid child support, but they lost contact. And... Um, I I wanted to find them, but it's amazing how many Frank Aaron and Mark Allen Ellis's there are oh. in California that were between those ages. And then we moved here, and I would go and I'd look um, on the computer and stuff, but I never found something that just felt definitive that I could really pin my um, hat on. And then April 1st of 2020, I got a call from my mom, and we had just moved here to Huron, and um, she asked me if I had, had found the boys, and I said no. Um, I said, I haven't really looked with the move and everything. I haven't really looked in the last year. And she said, well, your dad had a really disturbing dream about them um, last night. And he was just wondering. And so I just went, put her on speakerphone and went on Facebook and typed in Frank Ellis. That's um, my older brother. And I had done that before. And they're always where his profile picture was was a picture of a black Harley. And this time it was a picture of my dad. I mean, he just looked like my dad. And I sent him a message, said, I think you're my brother. And we got in contact that way and we met. Um, we visited and the next day I talked to Mark and Mark and I just clicked. Like, we just, we just clicked. We would talk for hours and hours. Um, he is an alcoholic, but um, he couldn't really couldn't really tell except he'd start slurring his words. He didn't drink until he was off work. Um, but we'd get to talking and it'd be so late and I'd go to bed early. I'd find him and say, well, sweetie, I'm, I'm going to get off the phone because you're drunk and I'm tired. So, <laughs> um, and we would, you know, we would, sometimes we would talk every single day. And for hours and hours and hours, and sometimes we'd go a couple of weeks and not talk. But it was just so weird how we just connected. We probably didn't agree on anything um, from politics to religion uh, to, I don't know, we both loved cats. We did agree on that. Um, but we would just talk and talk. And if one of us wasn't feeling good or something, it was like we knew. It was just the weirdest 
the weirdest connection. Um, I miss him. Mm. I miss him. He had a crazy, crazy life. He didn't always obey the law. Um, he never did go to jail, but he didn't always obey the law. He did a lot of stupid things. He learned from a lot of the stupid things he did. He had a tremendous amount of compassion for people. Um, but we'd talk about him being up in the mountains. We'd talk about our Scottish eyebrows. <laughs> we could take them and brush them back. You know, we had to trim them or we'd have to brush them over the top of our head. Um, he'd ask me, he said, you know why squirrels run around the back of trees? I said, no. He says, because squirrels know they taste good. <laughs> I said, well, I think I'll take your word. Um, and I said, you're going to be homeless? And he says, I am not homeless. I'm not homeless. I could go get an apartment if I want to. I've got money. I'm living this way because I want to live this way. And when I don't want to live this way anymore, I'll find a place to live. And that was just... So did he not, he didn't have electricity or plumbing? Nope. Oh. <laughs> he just... And, and he liked, he, he liked that way of life. He'd just go up there and just... Eat squirrels and fish. Is that how he like provided for himself with food, or did he go to the grocery store? He go to the grocery store, and he liked he liked the comforts too. But he he was happy to live that way when he wanted to live that way, and then when he didn't want to live that way, he didn't live that way. They asked me, um, but um, yeah, we we got to spend time together in July of 2020. And then I went out and spent a week with him in May of 2021. He got really sick um, in February, November of 2020, um, actually. And then February, he ended up in the hospital. And I just felt like God was telling me, you need to go and, and, um, and visit him. Um, and I was the one that he would call when he was sick. Um, he didn't know the Lord, um, but he'd call me and he'd ask me to pray for him. Um, I learned a lot from him. I learned to be bold about my faith because I wanted him in heaven. And he had congestive heart failure, heart failure. Um, drank like a fish. He smoked like a two cycle. And and he knew he was, he was dying. Um, and he was afraid he was going to die in a hospital, so he wouldn't, he wouldn't go. Um, and he wanted to um, spend time with my dad. He wanted to talk to my dad. Um, and my dad's on Social Security. He's like, I can't afford to go. He got his um, disability because he couldn't work anymore, which just crushed him that he couldn't work anymore. But he, he was such an odd, odd man. He um, got his disability and one day my dad got this box full of cash. Just come and see me. And um, he, daddy won't fly, Mark wouldn't fly. Um, so daddy packed up his Suburban and drove down there and spent 11 days with him, talked to him about the, the Lord. And um, then he drove up and saw his sister, drove up and saw my brother, Frank. And he was driving home on August 20th last year. And um, Mark's roommate came home and found the police in front of the house and they found him dead. Mm -hmm. And so we don't know if he, we don't know if he knew Jesus, but I know that God pursued him relentlessly. Yeah. And I think that was that that urgency that my dad had to contact him yeah. was because we needed to share Christ with him. Mm. It was it was just very powerful. He had 
And he'd say, I, I don't know, I have a lot of questions of God. I'd say, well, you're an arrogant little cuss, aren't you? Mm-hmm. And he said, he'd say, what do you mean? I said, well, um, you, you say you believe in God, but you want him to answer all these questions before you'll follow him. Like, he goes, well, I guess I am an arrogant little cuss. <laughs> he probably weighed 90 pounds soaking wet. He was just a small man, but he was powerful in my life. He, in three years, he probably made more impact in my life than anybody. All right. Well, do you want to see it? I do. You're welcome. It's beautiful. That is really beautiful. <laughs> yeah, sure. yeah. You you just captured it beautifully. I love that. I just think, you know, the things that the things that we do, the choices that we make, the choices that my dad made when he was seventeen, eighteen, that impacted our lives, my brother's lives, my life. The you know, we think that we're making our choices, that we're living our life, and it affects our life, but it doesn't just affect our life. It affects other people's lives for years. And it affected our life. History affected our life. 